breakthrough. Energy harvesting design aims to turn Wi-Fi signals into usable power. I'm Steve Belair, welcome to Breakthroughs. Any device that sends out a Wi-Fi signal also emits terahertz waves. Electromagnetic waves with a frequency somewhere between microwave and infrared light. These high frequency radiation waves, known as T-rays, are also produced by almost anything that registers the temperature, including our own bodies and the inanimate objects around us. Terahertz waves are pervasive in our daily lives, and if harnessed, their concentrated power could potentially serve as an alternative energy source. Imagine, for instance, a cell phone add-on that passively soaks up ambient T-rays and uses their energy to charge your phone. However, to date, terahertz waves are wasted energy, as there are no practical ways to capture and convert them into a usable form. Now physicists at MIT have come up with a blueprint for a device they believe would be able to convert ambient terahertz waves into a direct current, a form of electricity that powers many household electronics. Their design takes advantage of the quantum mechanical or atomic behavior of the carbon material graphene. They found that by combining graphene with another material, in this case boron nitride, the electrons in graphene should skew their motion towards a common direction. Any incoming terahertz waves should shuttle graphene's electrons, like so many tiny air traffic controllers, to flow through the material in a single direction as direct current. The researchers have published their results today in the journal Science Advances and are working with experimentalists to turn the design into a physical device. We are surrounded by electromagnetic waves in the terahertz range, said lead author Haroki Isobi, a postdoc in MIT's Material Research Laboratory. If we can convert that energy into an energy source that we can use for daily life, that would help to address the energy challenges we are facing right now. Over the last decade, scientists have looked at ways to harvest and convert ambient energy into usable electrical energy. They have done so mainly through rectifiers, devices that are designed to convert electromagnetic waves from their oscillating, alternating current to direct current. Most rectifiers are designed to convert low frequency waves such as radio waves using an electrical circuit with diodes to generate an electrical field that can steer radio waves through the device as a DC current. These rectifiers only work up to a certain frequency and have not been able to accommodate the terahertz range. A few experimental technologies that have been able to convert terahertz waves into DC current do so only at ultra-cold temperatures, setups that would be difficult to implement in practical applications. Instead of turning electromagnetic waves into a DC current by applying an external electric field in a device, Asobi wondered whether, at a quantum mechanical level, a material's own electrons could be induced to flow in one direction in order to steer incoming terahertz waves into a DC current. Such a material would have to be very clean, or free of impurities, in order for the electrons in the material to flow through without scattering off irregularities in the material. Graphene, he found, was the ideal starting material. To direct graphene's electrons to flow in one direction, you would have to break the material's inherent symmetry, or what physicists call inversion. Normally, graphene's electrons feel an unequal force between them, meaning that any incoming energy would scatter the electrons in all directions symmetrically. The Sobe looked for ways to break graphene's inversion and induce an asymmetrical flow of electrons in response to incoming energy. Looking through the literature, he found that others had experimented with graphene by placing it atop a layer of boron nitride, a similar honeycomb lattice made of two types of atoms, boron and nitrogen. They found that in this arrangement, the forces between graphene's electrons were knocked out of balance. Electrons closer to boron felt a certain force, while electrons closer to nitrogen experienced a different pull. The overall effect was that physicists called skew scattering, in which clouds of electrons skew their motion in one direction. Sobe developed a systematic theoretical study of all the ways electrons in graphene might scatter in combination with an underlying substrate such as boron nitrate, and how this electron scattering would affect any incoming electromagnetic waves, particularly in the terahertz frequency range. If the graphene was relatively pure, 
He found that electrons were driven by incoming terahertz waves to skew in one direction, and this skew motion generates a DC current. If too many impurities did exist in the graphene, they would act as obstacles in the path of electron clouds, causing these clouds to scatter in all directions rather than moving as one. With many impurities, this skewed motion just ends up oscillating, and the incoming terahertz energy is lost through this oscillation, Asobi explains. So we want a clean sample to effectively get a skewed motion. They also found that the stronger the incoming terahertz energy, the more of that energy a device can convert to DC current. This also means that any device that converts T rays should also include a way to concentrate those waves before they enter the device. With all this in mind, the researchers drew up a blueprint for a terahertz rectifier that consists of a small square of graphene that sits atop a layer of boron nitrate and is sandwiched within an antenna that would collect and concentrate ambient terahertz radiation, boosting its signal enough to convert it into a DC current. This would work very much like a solar cell except for a different frequency range to passively collect and convert ambient energy, Fu says. Very cool. I'll leave a link in the description to the full article and as usual, please like, share, subscribe and take care.